way that it is. I like to talk about why a lot because if we can understand why, that's much more long lasting than remembering, oh, this is how it works. All right. So let's talk about how a positive color that you can see, a negative is a what? Color you can't. Wait. Positive times negative. Is a positive. A negative. Wait, I thought you said a color you, a positive color you can see, and then what? Yeah, no, I said a positive in a color that you can see. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so a positive times a negative. That just represents a positive being multiplied by a negative, and that's a negative, okay? Let's understand why. First, let's do a quick little review of what multiplication is a shortcut for. Lane, what is, a, is multiplication a shortcut for? I'm doing the thing. Like, what thing? Instead of like doing like, you know, doing four plus four plus four three times, uh -huh. just do it the same so it's back. But okay, so three okay. times four is really adding four three times. Yeah. Four is adding three, three, four, three, times. three four times. That I should have put in three in there. So it's either 4 plus 4 plus 4, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, okay? So it's a shortcut for addition, all right? So if I have a positive 3 times a positive 4, I add 4, a positive 4, 3 times, or a positive 3, 4 times, okay? So let's see what it means to multiply a negative 3 by a positive 4, okay? Well, we're just taking a negative 3 and we're adding it up 4 times. Is that I mean, does that, we all agree to that? Yeah. Take a negative 3, add on a negative 3, another negative 3, and another negative 3. Okay. If I looked at a number line, here's 0. We're in the negative space. We'll put 0 way over there, right? I'm starting at negative 3, and I add on another negative 3, and another negative 3, another negative 3. And where am I now? Um, negative 12. <laughs> Yeah. It looks pretty sloppy, doesn't it? Negative. Negative. Twelve. And so a positive times a negative is a negative. It's like saying uh, I'm going to go this direction. All right. So if I'm looking this direction, this is generally what I think of as positive. And that back there, that would be negative. If I want to go five feet, move five feet this direction. So if I want to go this direction, but I go negative five feet, which way do I go? That way. Okay. That's a positive times a negative. The positive is that direction. The negative is that direction. If I want to go that way in a negative fashion, I actually go that way. Okay. Well, let's say this is still the positive direction. This is the negative direction still. I say I want to go back. You know, this way, I'm going to go in a negative direction. And I'm going to go in a negative direction five feet. So if I want to go back this way five feet, what do I wind up doing? Is that? Just going back five feet, right? That's a positive times a negative. In two senses of the word. Go that way a negative or go that way positive, I'm still going backwards. But what if I want to go this way, right? I want to go backwards. Negative five feet. Yeah. I want to go backwards. I want to go this direction. Negative five feet. So then you walk forward. I would actually walk forward. Backwards. I want to go backwards in a positive way. I want to go this direction, a positive five feet. I go backwards five feet. I want to go backwards in a. I want to go negative five feet in this direction. I'm actually going to go this way. So then you're not actually going in that direction. Um, right, because I'm saying that I'm like gonna walk backwards. I'm gonna walk backwards negative five feet, right? But if I'm negative of backwards, opposite of backwards, I'm going actually this way. Okay. That's negative times negative is positive. If I want to go backwards, but I want to do it in a negative amount, I actually go that. Okay. 
say this is the positive direction because I'm faced with this direction, which would make this negative, right? If I go this way, negative five feet, I actually go backwards, right? Because the negative five feet is the opposite of the direction that I want to go, right? Or like if I hit the gas in the car, right? And I say I'm going negative five miles an hour, which way am I going? You're in reverse. You're backwards. In reverse, actually. Whatever. What don't you get about? Kind of like when you say you go forward, then you go back. Why? Well, that's how negative works. Let's say that I'm going to pay you $5, right? That would be positive. I would be increasing the amount of money that you have by $5, right? What if I pay you negative $5? So I pay you more. Right, it goes the other way. That's positive and negative. Right? So if I want to go positive, and I want to go this direction, which is a positive direction, I'm negative five feet, I actually go backwards. Or if I say I'm going negative five miles an hour, I actually means I'm going backwards. Okay, right? I can say I'm going this way with negative five, or I can look backwards, I say, well, I'm going that way, this direction, the negative direction, five miles an hour. Okay? So in this direction, I'm, I am going five miles an hour. This direction, I'm going negative five miles. Depends on kind of the way I'm looking. I'm looking forward, and I'm going back. If I'm going in reverse, then I'm looking forwards, I'm going backwards. I'm right? going at negative speed. If I'm looking backwards, well, it looks like I'm going in a positive direction. I'm going this way, the car's in reverse, so I'm going actually a positive number in the negative direction. But if I'm looking in the negative direction, and I say I'm going to go a negative speed while looking backwards, I'm actually going forwards. I want to go this way, this way at negative five miles an hour. Well, negative five miles an hour means the opposite direction. I'm actually going forward. Which is the same as saying, a negative times a negative is a positive. It's like saying I'm looking backwards and I'm going at negative speed, which means I'm actually moving forward, positive direction. Okay? So positive plus a positive is a negative? No, a positive plus a positive is a positive. Negative times a negative. Oh. We're talking about multiplication here, right? Addition, it's a little bit more straightforward. It's like, well, if I add some and I take some away, add some, take some away, I'm just wherever I wound up. If I went plus 5 and minus 12, 12 is bigger than the 5, so I wound up negative. Okay. But a positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Just be a, a reminder because we multiply positives by negatives and negatives by negatives. Right? Have we never done that? No. Raise your hand. No. What's easier? You said it's easier to what? What? No. No, Dalton, you did. I did? Yes, you did. When? You still don't break Yep. Ten seconds. You said it's easier to something. Yep. Okay. 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 So just remember positive times negative is negative, negative times negative is positive. Um, So everything, there you go. All right, so let's look at number three. X minus three plus six minus two X. So if I see a two next to an X, and I plug a number in there for X, it means that I'm doing the two multiplied by the number. The X 
that I wanted you to use was three. Two. Or wait, no, two. Number three, I wanted you to use two. Wait, did you make this wrong with alpha? Uh. No, you didn't want the website. I think I did get these off the website. Uh, all right, so we're gonna let x be two. So x is two. Two instead of x minus three plus six minus two times two instead of x. Well, let's, let's be really strict and follow the order of operations and multiply first. Two okay. times two. Two times two? Four. Four. Yeah. Okay, four. Minus six plus, plus three minus six. Why don't you just do the rest before you go? Then two minus three. Then go back to the six. Two minus three, three plus, plus six, three. what four? Minus. Minus four, okay. Oh, and then no. we do two minus three, which is negative one. And then Actually negative one plus wrong. six is five, uh -huh. minus four is one. Good. What did I do wrong? Isn't that right here? You probably became. Oh, if you I did. Two plus minus three equals one. Equals five. Right here. We're doing the one before. That's what I did. Plus three the first time. Thanks to remember. That probably mess a lot of people up if they if they did uh, get the incorrect answer here. They forget that this that this there's negative here. Right? You see two times two, you think four. You put plus four. You just kind of lost track of that negative, so be careful about that. Two minus three, if you get as one, remember to keep your positives and negatives straight. Okay. Here's one that's pretty common as well. Let's say we look at uh, this step right here. Two minus three plus six minus four. And maybe they get 2 minus 9 minus 4. What did this imaginary person do? They added the 3 and the 6 before they did the 2 minus 3. Right. That would equal 3, that's what I thought. Yeah. So you yeah. did 3 plus 6 is 9? Uh, I did. Oh, you didn't. 2 minus 3 equals 1. And then I didn't do minus 3. Okay, so you didn't. That's what I did. Negative there. Okay, JC. Well, you can also get the same answer if you did 6 minus 4, which equals 2, and then the. Right, which seems to be like, hey, that's uh, out of order, right? That's not yeah. the order of operations. It's still the same right. The thing about it is, though, <clears throat> the order of operations is really trying to make an order for things like exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. It's not trying to imply an order of which things to add and subtract first, even though it says from left to right, if. We look at this instead of 2 minus 3 plus 6 minus 4. We can look at it as 2 plus what? Uh, 3 plus 6. 2 plus 4 minus 6. What am I adding here? 3. Negative, negative, three. negative 3. Plus 6 plus 4. Almost. Negative 4. Negative 4. Okay. This, we can view this as subtraction, like 2 minus 3. I'm at 2, and I go back 3. Okay. Or I can see it as 2 plus the number, negative 3. And that's the same thing. And if I see it that way, then really it doesn't matter what order I add these. I could add these first. Now that this is a negative 3, not a positive 3, that I make 9 with. That's not going to work. Uh, 6 plus... Negative 4, I could do that first. I could even do 2 plus negative 4. Start with that, just swing this negative 4 over here with the 2. Right? I could do that in any order. That's using the commutative and the associative property. Okay? The commutative property is I can move, I can actually move them around. I can move the numbers around in addition and multiplication. Not subtraction and division, but addition and subtraction. If I'm adding negative numbers, then I can just move them all around the way that I want. Associativity is just kind of, when I'm, when I'm trying to choose between 2 plus negative 3 plus 6, should I do 2 plus negative 3 or negative 3 plus 6? Yeah, but it is not 
Yeah. Near yeah. enough. Yeah. I should hear all these zippers yeah, going up. Like 51. Yeah, 51. You guys know how to tell time? Not that close to 51. Then you should be interrupting my class with all the zippy zips. Okay? Yeah, we have plenty of time, so shh. Stop talking, stop shuffling, stop zipping. Zip. Unless you're asking questions of your lips. Do that. Associative says, in addition, I could multiply in this string of three here, I could add the two and the negative three first, or the negative three plus the six first. It's not going to make a difference. So with the associative and the community property of addition, I can I could say two and negative four first, negative two, and the negative three and the six, that's plus three. Three minus two is one, just like like we got the other way. Okay. So look at seven. <coughs> This class could have a lot less homework. I didn't have to keep telling you to be quiet. And it was appropriate to be quiet. Um, all right, so we're going to plug negative 8 in there. What I like to do to clear up any confusion is to think of x as not, well, I mean, this is what x is, but just think of it as an empty set of parentheses, just a blank, which is exactly the job of x to be a blank, just to be a place for a number to go, okay? So now that I have let that be a blank space, just fill that space with negative eight. So now I go through and decide, no, not exactly decide. I remember the order that we all agreed to do this in, and what do we do first? Five times negative eight. Multiplication, so, yeah. What would you do first? Honor, oh, I got negative 40. For 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Okay, negative 40. I got 40. We got the 9 minus 40. She's just saying this part right here, right? Just that plus part. minus 40. And plus negative 40. Well, yeah, 9 plus negative 40 or 9 minus 40 is the same. Oh, yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. And that's what, that's what I have written. If you had plus negative 40, you were also right. 9 minus 40. Okay. What do you make of this multiplication? What, what should we get there, Robert? Uh, 9 times negative 8 is negative 72. Okay. So 9 minus 40 minus 72? Yeah. No. Times subtraction. Yeah, there's a minus right there. Yeah. So either we need to write this, minus negative 72. Or you can turn it into a plus sign. Or you could negative 9 times negative 8 is positive 72. So either minus a negative or minus a negative is the same as adding 72. You might wonder, why don't I just go like this? Because I seem to confuse too many people. You might think you're not confused, but you get confused. So we have 9 minus 40 plus 72. So if we add those together, we should be good, right? Negative 31 plus 72. Right side. If we had spent our time in class more wisely, we would have already gotten this and got some of this done already, but for, as it is, it's going to be homework. Okay. We're going to take 6 and we're going to plug it in for x. Okay, so x is just empty spot, it's just a blank set of parentheses. 1 minus 3 times 6 plus 10. Okay, so negative 3 times 6. 18. Negative, negative, three times eight. Six is negative 18. I can also say 3 times 6 is 18, and I'm subtracting that. Right? That would work as well. Plus 10. One minus 18 is negative 17. Plus 10, negative 7. Okay. That's positive and negative. I have mess some people up. Okay, we've got a lot of time left. Enough time for you to listen. To get our homework. Right? Okay. And if we can be quick about it, and efficient with our time, we can get several examples in as well. I want you to go back through all of these, 
And on the right side of each of these problems, I want you to do what's called simplifying, or well, let's just call it simplifying. Is that? Well, I accidentally wrote my answers in there. How so can I get so. a different piece of paper and then just staple it on there? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sim what is simplify? Let's see. Um, let's take an example like number eight. One minus three x plus ten. So we could view this as one plus negative. You don't have to write it like this every time. Of course, you can kind of do some of this in your head. But one plus negative three x plus ten. We have a bunch of addition, so we have the associative and commutative properties. We can just switch stuff around. If I switch this 10 over here and have 1 plus 10 plus negative 3x, right, I can do that. That's one of the properties of associative. If you're not sure, put three numbers together. 1 plus 7 plus 9, whatever. Try any order that you want to add them up. You'll always get the same thing. So you want a 9 first, 7, 1 first, 7, and 9 first, whatever. So I can add the 1 and the 10. This 1 and this 10 can give an 11. I'll just I'll just switch it back to saying 11 minus 3x instead of 11 plus negative 3x. Okay? And it's simplified. That's the simplification. So put things together that can be put together. Sarah? Um, what I already kind of like simplified it when I did the first problem. Yeah. Like, okay. So do I still have to like do it again? Well, I, for each of these, I want to see the simplified version. If you have that, then you can just write it over there. If you haven't officially written it down, just officially write it down. Just make sure it's right there so I can easily see it for each one. You can check it easily. Okay. One more example. Number five. Negative 10x plus 6x. I'm going to simplify that, could I? Yeah. It's not 10 plus 1, right? But it's negative 10x plus 6x. How would that simplify, Robert? If you do negative 30 plus 6x, uh, without plugging a number in. Oh. I mean, just simplify it before you even plug a number in. Jackson? No. No? Could you add together? Yeah. Negative 30 plus 6x. And get what? Negative 16. Negative 16. That's a negative 10 and a positive 6. Or wait. Negative 16. Negative 4. Negative 4, yeah. Negative 4x. Yes. Okay. Those two skills, moving stuff around and combining these x terms, that's, that's really all you need. I, just want to, I want you to simplify each of these and write that on the right side of each of these little tables here. Carter. What's that? Okay. Okay, we'll have to wait. Uh, question, Avery. So that's just the negative <coughs> form of that? No, it's a simplified mm -hmm. form. Yeah, it's a simplified form, not yeah. the negative form. Like if this was negative 10 plus 6, it would be the, like, to combine those two numbers would be negative 4, right? Yeah. And we have negative 10x plus 6x, so it's negative 4x. We're going to get into that in a little more detail about like what all that even mean. Okay? But, so far that's all we really need to be able to do. Alright? So that's the answer right there. For number five, I've given you two answers so far. For number five and for number eight, you have the answers. There they are. Yeah. All right, pack up. And yes, have a good day. Goodbye.